Welcome back. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner of Metazone, Rovi and Mscribe, and today we bring you L2s again. <laughs> I think we're going to be speaking about Layer 2s for a long time, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. This is like how we left off in Ethereum land, remember? Before yeah. we fucking migrated over to Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> well, we went to uh, the DeFi conference. No, not DeFi. <laughs> the Ethereum conference. <laughs> In, the of Denver. Yeah, in Denver. Literally and, about like this time last year. Yeah, we walk into the conference and we're just inundated with L2s. Everywhere. Everywhere was L2s. Like literally everyone is throwing shirts at us. Yeah. And, like it's like, dude, how about my L2? You, you get an L2. and You, you get, get an, an L2. L2. You know, we all need L2s, L2s. And then there's like a, some benches on the very back. It's like, but well, we do L3s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it just gets mad. It was a madhouse. And we're like, holy shit, this is really like turning into uh, a beast over here, right? And then, you know, this whole ordinals thing happens in Bitcoin. It's like, wow, that, that's like a breath of fresh air. It was. A little bit. It's like, <sighs> you know, <laughs> a little bit of that. Yeah. Just kind of escape the madness of like the Web3 corporate like takeover, I guess. You yeah. can kind of like label it. And then uh, here we are, fast track one year later, dude. Yeah. And it feels like we just repositioned, like quantum entanglement is like a real thing, yeah. dude. It's like <laughs> <laughs> entanglement between chains, dude. You just cannot, yeah. you can't escape it. That's right? right. Yeah. So here we are again talking about L2s and I mean from, so we're building stuff, right? <laughs> I th allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> we're building things, yes. Yeah, okay. So we're building stuff. So we naturally have to look into this stuff. We have to. We have to, right? Just like we did on Ethereum, right? We built stuff in the past, mm -hmm. specifically metaverse native stuff. Very cool things. Yeah. <laughs> and those cool things were active and deployed and they were functioning and they were creating value and people yeah. saw value in them. And then eventually they broke because, you know, yeah. Ethereum broke. Right. And then, yeah, the, the dilemma, the elephant in the room surfaced and we're like, fuck, now we have to like evaluate the landscape yeah. and pick our horse, right? Yeah. And there wasn't that many horses for L2s at the time. <laughs> Maybe like four or five. 2020. 2020? Yeah. yeah, this was like 2020. Yeah. yeah. It was like uh, Matic, XDAI. Yeah. Matic just did their IEO like. On Binance. Like eight or nine months prior. It was like it was like one of the first IDOs on Binance. It was, ap yeah, absolutely. I don't know if it was the first, but it, it was, was like one of the first five or something. Yeah, one of the first five, yeah. Yeah, during like the heart of the bear market last time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're like, hey, IEOs are going to be the next thing. And, um, you know, Axie Infinity emerged from that. A bunch of other shit, right? It yeah. was cool. But, yeah, we didn't understand exactly at the time, like, how Im important Layer 2s were going to be. Yeah. Until we started actually trying to build stuff, right? That's right. That's right. It's like, fuck. It's like, these. this is very, like, non-functional, like, non-user friendly. Yeah. And uh, we know Bitcoin. It, it mines every 10 minutes, right? And yeah. a new block. So it's already slow, right? That's not suitable for like metaverse interactions and yeah, and that's very expensive. So we all know this. So it's pretty easy to see that we need L2s on Bitcoin. Yeah, we've been making this call for like months in advance. We knew at some point this was going to hit and we saw Stacks is like the mm -hmm. only like existing infrastructure addressing this inevitable elephant, new elephant mm -hmm. in the room that was going to emerge. But we made the prediction is like at some point there's going to be like the next Bitcoin conference is going to look a lot like that Ethereum yeah. conference, right? And then yeah. here we are literally like in the middle of it. Like it seems like every day there's a new layer two like yeah. horse entering the race. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> what do we do with all this? And it, it, it's it's proliferating at a much higher pace than it did on Ethereum. Yeah, significantly higher. Right. And so us as creators and developers, we're looking into this from the perspective of development. It's like, yeah. where am I going to deploy? Which which technology am I going to use for my stack for L2? Yeah. And we got to pick one that's going to win, right? You don't want to pick one that, that doesn't win because then you're going to have to change technologies and that's a no-go. Yeah, there's and there's different definitions of winning, right? Like our context of that. Correct, yes. Some context is which of these are actually technical technically aligned, I guess, with like the, you know, um, the consensus around Bitcoin and such. That's right. Which not disruptive to that. Yeah. Truly. Winning means what are all the other developers going to pick? Correct. And you need to, and uh, us being early, you got to pick one early before everybody else. Correct. Yeah. Because you want to like plant your seeds right? Yeah. A as quickly as possible into like a truly, uh, I guess, like 
supportive ecosystem, right? And, and we want to deliver good products, you know, yeah, on, on top of Bitcoin. And here's yeah. why, it, you know, as a developer, you need to pick the right one. The right one, <clears throat> which gets market adoption. Is because if you pick the wrong one, that means you are telling your users to go download a specific wallet and get the right token mm. and, and do all and then bridge over here, not over there. Yeah, it's and true. And it's like all is like mess. It's a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I remember those days. It's it's a certified bitch, dude. <laughs> it's for real. But it's like a necessary one in some cases, right? Because <clears throat> certain applications require this type of activity. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, this is the burden the, of, of the entire Web3 space. Ethereum is not cleaning up in any regards. It's becoming more of a complex beast over time. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> For, like, the new user, right? It's like, fuck, I have all these different L2s. Like, Yeah, we've, man, we've made quite the mess everywhere. <laughs> if you thought the internet was a mess of, like, stratification, yeah, which is the fact that you got to create, like, a a different password for every single like yeah, web that, portal. Yeah, that's definitely a mess for sure. Right. It's kind of like it's m returning that same practice. Except way like worse. Mercury. It's This is the architecture level yeah, mess. I know. Password is like app level mess. <laughs> Agreed. Fuck. Okay, well, <laughs> whatever. So in light of that, it's happening on Bitcoin, right? So, so it's important to us. It's probably important to you guys watching this because... You want the highest entertainment value. Everybody wants that. <laughs> And Bitcoin in layer two is like a very entertaining sector. You know what I mean? Yeah, for it's sure. It's filled with entertainment. Just look at, um, analyze the historical evidence over there on Ethereum. Like some of the biggest um, airdrops of all time come mm -hmm. from L2s on mm, Ethereum. That's right. The biggest VC raises are like layer two organizations, right? Yeah, you infrastructure know. projects. Coinbase has its own layer two on that's Ethereum. Right. Eventually it's going to have its own Bitcoin layer two. That's right. <laughs> These things are going to happen, you know? So it's, yeah, we all kind of like collectively are sifting through all this madness to try and like uh, position ourselves in this inevitable, you know, yeah. happening. Yeah. Position ourselves from all kinds of angles. Yeah. From our perspective is, yeah, we want to deliver <clears throat> good products for the bitmap ecosystem, just for Bitcoin in general. Right. So we want it to be technically sound. Mm -hmm. We don't want to deliver anything that's connected to like an infrastructure that's like potentially exploitive right yeah because as we know like bridging of assets between different layers is like one of the biggest attack vectors of all time successful attack vectors yeah it's proven so okay so here we are let's kind of like surface level analyze what's out there it's yeah. impossible to kind of like contextualize everything in one sweep yeah <laughs> yeah so there's several of these obviously and uh i, I guess at some point once we start narrowing down our research yeah. we'll start going into a deeper dive into some of this stuff yeah I think that's how this channel kind of like we propagate our thoughts mm -hmm. historically. It's like, yeah, we were like, remember when we first got to orders, like we're looking at every fucking thing we can to yeah. kind of like find out like definitively, like where's the fun of va fundamental value? Yeah. Where does it lie? And then it's like, we kind of like centered around bitmap and track mm -hmm. BRC twenties. It's like, this is our, our nexus, right? This yeah. is where we're going to like focus. And if you've been paying attention to our channel, like over the last few months, most of our content has been like centered around. Yeah. Like a, a handful of things. Even the though core value core. propositions. Correct. So yeah. the same thing is going to happen. At some point, there's going to be like an umbrella layer two that like really supports that yeah. nexus. Right? Yeah. And we see the comments. There's many of you asking us to look into ICP. <laughs> we've been, man, we've been wanting to look into that for so fucking yeah, long. Yeah, man. These are, each one is its own rabbit hole. I mean, it's like a technical like dissection yeah. and it's like, does it stand like, uh, does it fit within like uh, breaking the laws of physics? Mm -hmm. Like, are they? Is it just marketing or is it real substance? That's the hardest thing to like crack through. Yeah. Uh, we're getting pretty good at that now. Yeah, <laughs> we can see through the marketing smoke and mirrors these days, but a lot of people cannot. So that is part of our task. We're gonna try our best to like you know peer through because you know a lot of these Web three companies they do a really good job. Yeah of like portraying a certain narrative, a certain pitch that just to the unsuspecting yeah. observer. As all of a sudden, it's like they've broken through some some sort of like achievement. Right. And then, and then yeah, again, with, without the context of what we've already seen on Ethereum, these all look like technological marvels, right? Yeah. But then you quickly realize like a lot of this is just copy pasta stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like you're right. literally just taking what's already been developed over like the course of the last three like or four years, erase Ethereum <laughs> and then put Bitcoin a virtual machine. 
correct stuff like this and it's like wow a lot of people are like whoa yeah where did this come from this is insane <laughs> yeah so you got to equip yourself with that knowledge that context right so you don't yeah. get easily duped right you know all right I mean? so let's let's jump into some of this stuff so bitcoin layer 2 bitfinity raises a token round and they raise roughly seven million dollars at 130 million dollar valuation which is a really high valuation it's pretty sexy yeah <laughs> it's pretty nice dude uh, so big names here, Polychain Capital, right? Some of the big names have invested into this. And mm -hmm. so uh, what is Bitfinity? It's a Bitcoin scaling network built on the Internet Computer Protocol, mm -hmm. right? ICP. Its competitive edge is being Ethereum virtual machine compatible, which will allow Ethereum developers to build Bitcoin-enabled decentralized applications on Bitfinity. So remember that like whole line because you're going to see basically... Yeah. A common theme among all these L2s is like uh, EVM compatibility is like one of the first check boxes, right? Yeah. Because like what's the value of like an L2 that doesn't like onboard um, Ethereum developers? Right, right. right. So uh, market capitalization of all BRC20 is $3.43 billion with a trading volume exceeding a billion in the last 24 hours. So clearly there's a lot of developer interest in Bitcoin. Yeah, right. that's just the motivation, right? Like it, the fact that what, what where where the L two's been all this time? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. All of a sudden, there's there's an incentive to yeah. to there's activity happening on Bitcoin. Whoa! It's hmm. like, and then yeah, like you're saying, this all activity needs to be like harnessed and like extracted into a tertiary. You, you know what? Something I just thought of like this: if L twos take off, like a lot of that activity is going to be taken away from Bitcoin, which means less resources or less value for the miners, mm. which is then exacerbates the problem in twenty one forty. Yeah, you mean so, like the, the 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 dilemma of like uh, the what what, what the uh, yeah the subsidy subsidy dilemma. Yeah, correct. Which is not a clear thing yet. Probably till like after this happening. Probably after this happening because yeah, three Bitcoin to pay for your entire farm of miners. Yeah. So what, what do you, what, what's that? So what's I feel that? like, I, I feel like there needs to be consideration for that in terms of an L2 design. Mm, interesting. Some sort of kickback or what? Yeah. Some, some <laughs> design so considerations, some, yeah. some sort of injection into Bitcoin that allows them to hmm. secure the network, secure the network, right? Secure the parent chain, the actual yeah. master chain, the God chain, if you will. Yeah. That is that. And that is really like the, that is the most important thing is like, how does this all really affect Bitcoin? Cause Bitcoin right. is like the thing you cannot really disrupt. Yeah, correct. It's just, it's too fucking holy at this point. Yeah. <laughs> in context of all the other chains and stuff. No. You it, know what I mean? It, I don't know if holy is the right word, but it's the digital physics layer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what I just said, watch our previous videos. Correct. All right. So next one. So we have the documentation for Bitfinity here. So, we're gonna have we're gonna have to deep dive this like at least in the background and yeah I mean try to determine it's a good motivation now it's like <laughs> there's projects on ICP with multi million dollar fundraisers it's like okay yeah. time to look into ICP so we, we finally might have found our, our hook <laughs> <laughs> so yeah expect that deep dive down the road all right Mooney comes in and says given progress on milestones and testness the Stacks Nakamoto launch timeline has been narrowed down to April fifteenth through the 29th. <laughs> So this is, we've been talking about stacks for the longest time now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty obscure as far as like, when are we actually going to get to Nakamoto? If you've actually been interacting with stacks, participating in any of their recent launch pads, you know, use their BRC20 swapping tools, you've probably encountered some like realizations as far as, um, you know, user experience friction. It's like, damn, this is really not that much better than Bitcoin, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And, um. So that that kind of like, in comparison to Ethereum L2s, it's like that's not the user experience you expect. Yeah. Typically, you expect like an L2 is like tremendously more efficient and like user friendly. You know, like Polygon, for example, it's like pennies yeah. to transact. It's shit like this. Even though like the withdrawal times are still super long and such. But. Yeah, Stacks takes the lead here in terms of like from a developer standpoint because they've been building way before everyone was interested in the L2s. I agree. Yeah, that that's kind of like if we're picking a horse in the lead. At the, yeah, yeah. Well, the from first our, one we start with stacks. Just from like a pure authenticity like metric. Yeah. If we're to like quantify like different metrics that make these L2s valuable, like authenticity, like genuineness. Yeah. It, it, instead of falling for a potential smoke and mirrors. 
Yeah, like a, just capitalizing on the wave, right? Yeah. Which increases like your um, rug Pro- probability rates. Exactly. It's way higher. Exactly. Yeah. It sucks to get rug, but even <laughs> worse when you build on something that that pulls a rug is. Yeah. So another one here is this is Unisat's, I guess, like most recent announcement. Yeah. All right. So fractal Bitcoin. <laughs> this is a bitch <laughs> to kind of like unpack in a sense. So, but, no, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. If you're a veteran in the uh, the crypto space, you've heard of app chains probably before. Okay. And and that concept modularity is, and such. Yeah. yeah, that concept is is approaching uh, Bitcoin's ecosystem. Yeah. With fractal Bitcoins. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And yeah, th- you were explaining to me like if you're like an architectural designer, this is a very common like. Yeah. So so they leverage virtualization of uh, machines, uh, kind of like a <laughs> Ethereum virtual machine, right? So that's a kind of like an extended concept. But virtualization is like putting an application on a container mm-hmm. that is sort of isolated from everything else. Mm. And you could basically do all kinds of things with that container and spin one up, spin one down at will. And so it's a lot easier than running everything on a, con- on a, on a single system, basically like we're running Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. And so virtualizing Bitcoin is probably a good idea. Mm. And so, and if you're an, uh, a software architect, like these are common things that you do on a regular basis for the last 15 years. Mm, okay. Right. So applying it to Bitcoin is not unreasonable. Okay. It's just how does it affect the Bitcoin blockchain is what I'm curious about. And they don't explain that thoroughly. That yeah. Yeah. If you go through this, so I, it's a recommended read. This came out like I think yesterday from the Unisat team. Again, Unisat definitely checks that checks that box, I guess, as far as authenticity, mostly because they've been around. They've been present. Yeah, building on this Bitcoin ordinals ecosystem since the very since the drop beginnings. practically. Yeah, yeah. So there's as far as like a a team or organization that has like a true motivation to actually solve real technical problems. Yeah, it's them because they see it. They see the technical problems every day. Correct. Yeah, they're not just like hearing headlines of like, oh shit, things oh. are happening on Bitcoin. Oh, they like L twos. Yeah. We should do one. Yeah, let me go copy this like whole tech yeah. tech infrastructure to stack on Ethereum and just deploy it or say we're going to deploy it on Bitcoin and raise like tens yeah. of millions of dollars. Right. Right. That's yeah. So they have the authenticity check. This is a good concept. Like you're saying it makes sense, but yeah, it's early stages, but if you, if you read it and you have conviction in it and you think they will deliver something of substance in the future. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense to just continue interacting within that Unisat ecosystem. Yeah. In the event there is like a future airdrop. Yeah. At stake, Agreed. you know. All right. So next one, unlocking Bitcoin's potential with Merlin Chain. So this is uh, from our friends uh, Jeff from Recursiverse and Bitmap Tech. They are coming out with their their solution for L2s. Yeah. Um, talking about someone who runs into L1 problems on a regular basis. L2 is obviously a big big deal solution. Yeah, and especially like in the metaverse sector, right? Considering again, like that was our main motivation to like you know figure out the L2 dilemma on Ethereum because we were participating in that metaverse yeah. ecosystem and like quickly we realized like, damn, yeah, L1 is not conducive to like a real um, digital economy. Yeah. So it can't really support that layer of activity. So I was like, fuck, L2 must make the most sense. Right. So here we are again, BRC 420s. It's like a whole UGC economy happening where the ability to have microtransactions in the virtual space, it, it exists. It can't happen. Mm-hmm. But very unfeasible to happen on Bitcoin's L1 because it's just right. you can't transact and have like a user generated ecosystem like where it costs like tens or hundreds of dollars to purchase. That's right. You know, digital goods. Right. right? Or to, you know, participate in play to earn environments and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as authenticity, again, been building. Yep. <laughs> proven track record. Uh, and I think it's in testnet phase at this point. Okay, so um, uh, one thing I wanted to, to mention is that all of a sudden, virtual worlds has become a like a like an consideration ar- a consideration from architecture standpoint. Yeah, it's like we need to support these things, right? Yeah, yeah like you were saying, it's like before it was like DeFi it was like yeah, the uh, the infrastructure needs to like be all about like how do we support DEXs and yeah, yeah, automated yeah. market makers and stuff like right. that. Now it's like. The virtual worlds, like that's where this this shit is going to be happening, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I agree. 
Pretty cool. All right. So another tweet, Bitmap Tech here. Testnet Bridge for Merlin Layer 2 is live. It can support Bitcoin, BRC20 tokens. It will support Bitmap, BRC420, and more in days. Yeah. So this is just a testament to like we were talking about earlier. The pace of acceleration of this is is quite mind-blowing, to say the least. Like, yeah. Is, yeah. Like in the previous cycle, we, it took months or sometimes even years for these like main net stages to kind of like yeah, years. complete. Yeah, yeah, and to hit like mainnet. Oh, I mean, take a look at Polkadot. How how many how many years have you spent talking about Polkadot, and they yeah. just barely released theirs? Like, correct. Yeah. So it, yeah, the pace is just like insane. You know. Uh, speaking about pace, BBM, Bitcoin Virtual Machine is a native cryptocurrency uh, used with the BBM ecosystem to empower builders. So this is from Trustless Computer. It seems. It seems. If you dig deep enough, you. Yeah, we talked about them in the past. You know, Trustless yeah. Computer. There are no strangers to uh, leveraging EVM capabilities and trying to port Bitcoin assets and you know as some sort of like into some middle environment. Yeah. To create some sort of a semblance of a of a virtual machine for Bitcoin, right? That is yeah. the thesis behind Trustless Computer, and I thought it made a lot of sense back then. Yeah. <laughs> it was a worthy like extrapolation, I guess. Sure. It's like shit, dude. Bitcoin needs some uh, some help. Right. So, yeah. I mean, the thesis makes sense. It's like, who's actually going to execute and what tech are you going to be executing mm -hmm. with? Right. That's really what's in question. Yeah. So, I think it looks like they've expanded their, I guess, their uh, ecosystem a little bit more. And, like, yeah. So, this is like they've entered their name into this race as well with this BVM. Yeah. And it's an ongoing public sale. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to see all this like happen, dude. Like, remember, I was like, we're going to enter the white paper phase pretty soon. <laughs> it's it was like, let's skip that and let's go into the money raising <laughs> phase. <laughs> right away, dude. Yeah. So it's happening. All right. Uh, finally, top Bitcoin L2 project. So we shared this before. Last week. Bitfinity, Conflux, and so and so forth. Uh, Satoshi VM's in there. LIGO. BBM. BBM. Bob. Bob. It just goes on and on yeah. and on. This list is going to get perpetually longer and longer and longer over time. Yeah, this is a 10x growth <laughs> here in terms of how many people are <laughs> contributing to this problem. Yeah, so it's, it's fucking crazy, dude. The main takeaway here is like I, it seems like the trend, at least the first half of this year, is going to be like let's speed run <laughs> like a layer two infrastructure on Bitcoin. Yeah, what well, took us a couple of years to do it on Ethereum, let's speed run it on Bitcoin. Yeah, why? Because there's an impending bull market on yeah. the horizon. So it's like, and the infrastructure it exists already. Like, you don't, we don't have to like invent a wheel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, let's just take the wheel. Copy and paste GitHubs everywhere. <laughs> right. So, main takeaway is it's happening. The predictions have come true. Um, but yeah, this is a space where you really have to practice your due diligence. Yeah. Like to an extreme degree. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's well, well said, dude. Yeah, and um, we'll say, you know, but it's worthy to participate. And, you know, airdrops on Ethereum, they typically were allocated to, like, mainnet testers and shit like that. They all had their own, like, weirdly architected allocation schemes mm -hmm. like, as far as, like, what were the qualifications yeah. for such. Yeah. But even that comes with its own, like, s um, like scary risks. points. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, risks. Yeah. You know, don't yeah. connect your wallet to everything. Yeah, don't do that. Please don't do that. All right, guys, that's it for us. If we missed anything in the L2 space, let us know in the comment section below. And uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. Until next time, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.